The Lord Mayor is in the chair. This council meeting will be streamed live and recorded for publishing to the internet. Please note that an audio and visual recording is being taken of this meeting. This means that your presence at and any contribution you make to the meeting may be collected, used, disclosed or published publicly by the council, including transferring outside of Australia. The red light to my right indicates that the meeting is being filmed and streamed. Council acknowledges that we are meeting on the traditional country of the Kaurna people of the Adelaide Plains and pays respect to elders past and present. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship with the land. We acknowledge they have continuing importance to the Kaurna people living today. And we extend that respect to other Aboriginal language groups and other First Nations who are present today. The Council acknowledges the vision of Colonel William Light in determining the site for Adelaide and the design of the city with its six squares and belt of uh, surrounding continuous parklands, which is recognised in the National Heritage List as one of the greatest examples of Australia's planning heritage. Let us pray. Almighty God, we ask your blessing upon the works of the City of Adelaide. Direct and prosper its deliberations to the advancement of your glory and the true welfare of the people of this city. Amen. We'll all remain present, standing in silence, in memory of those who gave their lives in defence of their country, at sea, on land and in the air. Thank you, members. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Please be seated. <laughs> members, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the meeting of the City of Adelaide Council Chamber, Tuesday, the 27th of February, 2018. The time is 6.09 p.m. Uh, members, I'll take you immediately to your agendas. So we have item five, which is apologies and leave of absence. We have uh, Councillor Maloney on leave, and we have an apology from Councillor Clarehan, but I do understand that we may have other councillors in transit and otherwise a full compliment. So members, item six, which is confirmation of the minutes from meeting held on the 13th of February, 2018, moved by Councillor Martin. Do I have a second to please members? Seconded by Councillor Moran. Any questions, queries or debate? Summing up, Councillor Martin. Those in favour of adopting the minutes? Those against? We will carry the minutes from the meeting held on the 13th of February 2018. Members, I have approved two deputation requests this evening, the first of which is regarding item 12.4. On your papers, we have a deputation request from Mr. Alim Ali regarding the welcome, Welcoming Cities Initiative. Mr. Ali, welcome to the City of Adelaide Council Chamber and uh, we'll afford you a uh, time period of five minutes. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Lord Mayor, Deputy Lord Mayor and councillors of the beautiful City of Adelaide. I too would like to acknowledge that we are gathered on the lands of the Ghana people and pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. Broadly speaking, Australia is a multicultural success story. Our standards of living and levels of social cohesion rank among the highest in the world. Australia's population is one of the most culturally and linguistically diverse, while the First Nations peoples of this country represent more than 250 language groups and the oldest living and continuous culture. It's true to say that diversity is part of our DNA. However, diversity is not enough to address the social, cultural, economic and civic challenges that we face as cities and as a nation. While the majority of Australians have a migrant story, the Scanlon Foundation's Social Cohesion Index highlight, highlights growing tensions and cultural divides. The benefits of migration, multiculturalism and social cohesion are not being enjoyed by all. Population and economic distribution is polarised, with communities experiencing either rapid growth or stagnation and decline, and many institutions lack the resources and know-how to leverage the ideas and innovation that come from being welcoming and inclusive. Yes, diversity is a reality, but inclusion is a choice. 
and welcoming cities exists to help local councils navigate and benefit from that choice. In joining the Welcoming Cities Network, 15 cities and local councils in Australia have formally made the choice to create communities where everyone can belong and participate in social, cultural, economic and civic life. A further 70 local councils in Australia have expressed interest in joining the network, a network that is part of an international movement of more than 120 cities in the USA, Germany, the United Kingdom and New Zealand, including the cities of New York, Detroit, San Francisco, London, Glasgow, Frankfurt, Stuttgart and Christchurch. Migration, settlement, cultural diversity and inclusion done well is both our history and our future. And we recognise that of all tiers of government, councils are best positioned to develop localised solutions. You understand the nuance of, you understand the opportunities for your communities. However, we also recognise that you are often the least resourced, the least consulted and the least supported in this space. And so, in reality, Welcoming Cities exists for you. We are here to help you to share globally leading policy and practice, to, to build relationships with other cities in Australia and internationally, to tell the good news stories of community cohesion and economic growth, and, and to benchmark and advance that work through internationally accredited frameworks. As a skinny kid growing up in a suburban seaside town north of Brisbane in Queensland, I would go to the mosque on Friday and I would go to Sunday school on Sunday. And so I understand the value of diversity and the richness it has brought to my life. But being multicultural didn't make me Australian. For me, the one thing that defined what it meant to be Australian was a fair go for all. And as I read the headlines and as I listen to some of our political leaders, I wonder whether we are losing sight of that. I wonder whether Australia is only about a fair go for some. But then I'm reminded of why Welcoming Cities exists, to create thriving communities where everyone can belong. And I have the daily privilege of working with mayors and councillors, CEOs, economic development managers, community development managers, uh, NGOs and business owners. I'm encouraged daily by amazing projects and initiatives that are bringing positive social and economic change for both receiving communities and migrant communities. And I'm offered hope by the stories of new Australians, established Australians and first Australians working together. I'm excited uh, that we're able to host our third national symposium here in Adelaide on the 23rd of March and that the Lord Mayor has graciously agreed to host international, national and local guests in this beautiful building on the evening of the 22nd of March. I'm excited by the City of Adelaide's leadership and I congratulate you on the exceptional body of work that you are already leading in this space. And it's work that more cities and more councils really should have the opportunity to know about and learn from. And so it makes sense to me that Adelaide should be the first capital city in Australia to join this global initiative. I hope to be able to welcome you to the Welcoming Cities Network and I wish you well in your deliberations. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Mr Ali. Thank you very much. Members, our second deputation this evening is from Mr Ian Cox from the Hutt Street Centre. Mr Cox, welcome to the City of Adelaide Council Chamber and uh, we'll afford you a period of five minutes. Welcome. To the Lord Mayor, Deputy Lord Mayor and Councillors, thank you for the opportunity to talk tonight. The Hutt Street Precinct has been in the news of late and I wish to highlight a few significant outcomes and the contribution that Hutt Street Centre over 64 years has made to the City of Adelaide and South Australia, as well as highlighting a few steps that we have taken of late. Hutt Street Centre was actually the first homeless organisation to employ professional staff in the late 1980s. We led the establishment of a community housing organisation, Natcha was created, which is now Unity Housing Company. It's probably the leading community housing organisation in South Australia. And as the chair at the time, we developed and built the first affordable housing project in the city of Adelaide with a partnership with council and the Bendigo Bank. We led the way with identifying frail-aged homeless people as there were no professional services for this client group. I chaired the sector committee to apply for aged care packages and led the way forward to secure funding for a specific aged care facility in George Court, which was established in Bowdoin and is now with Anglicare. In cooperation with the Adelaide City Council, we transitioned your HAC program into our aged care program. We now provide an outreach service into the Vinnie's Night Shelter to ensure a professional case management service is provided. And we were the first service to host the Royal District Nursing Service, RDNS, 
Over 25 years of a wonderful partnership, still going strong. We have over 18 other visiting services operating out of our day centre. GPs, physios, legal services. Our innovation continues. Our Aspire program, the first homelessness social impact bond in Australia. It's a $9 million bond funded by investors across Australia. Aspire is about keeping people out of the hospital system, out of the justice system and from returning to homelessness. Three really large outcome targets and each client receives three years of ongoing support. There is no other program in Australia that can replicate this program and is well on track to return dividends to investors. This is the only social impact bond in South Australia. The Street Crew is a brilliant success story of picking up a government program which was struggling and then truly delivering with incredible outcomes. Over 60 housing outcomes in just six months and engaging with over 260 people. It required a relentless approach and we never gave up, even though many clients wanted to hide from us. We were like that persistent fly in the summer months. Through our leadership of this program, we reduced the number of rough sleepers from plus 125 in August 2016, 74 in August 2017, which is in stark contrast to Melbourne, Sydney and the other capital cities across the country. In August 2017, we advised that an interstate organisation was awarded the tender and that they now run the program. I commend the City Council in working with the Don Dunstan Foundation on the Adelaide Zero Project. It was stated at the launch that they believe the numbers of rough sleepers are now back to 120 people. And if you walk through the city today, you'll see people sleeping in places you haven't seen for a very long time. Hut Street Centre brought the Zero Project idea to the State Government two years ago after I was invited as one of 100 thought leaders on homelessness across the world to a conference in Chicago. Through my contacts there with the Institute of Global Homelessness, Hutt Street Centre has silently advocated for Adelaide to become one of the 12 vanguard cities to end street homelessness. Our Walk a Mile event is the largest homelessness event in Australia. The Hutt Street Precinct comes alive. Just under 4,000 people walked in support last August and 9,000 school students walked in their schools. 13,000 people walked to raise awareness of homelessness, Hutt Street Centre and the Hutt Street Precinct. Our pathways to employment, education and training programs all continue to shine. Last year, 153 people found employment and today we have over 40 people working on the Fringe Festival and Adelaide 500 events. Our case management services last year assisted 570 people to secure housing. These are pretty impressive outcome figures. And so over the past five weeks, we've been engaging with the local traders and residents every single day. We continue our strong relationship with the SA Police and Council staff. We're listening and open to any solutions. We've already employed our extra staff. We already have our own cameras installed and look at installing new lighting at the front of Hutt Street. But this is an issue that's not just confined to the Hutt Street precinct. It's an Adelaide wide issue and we're encouraged by the support of councillors in acknowledging our tremendous work over the past 64 years. City of Adelaide and Hutt Street Centre are interwoven in the Council's strategic plan. Creativity, livability, innovation, social transformation and welcoming. And we are both well placed as leaders in not just Adelaide and South Australia but across the world. As outcome based organisations we look forward to working together, looking at all solutions in the near future and long term. Thanks very much for your time. Thank you very much Mr Cox, greatly appreciate it. Members, that concludes our public forum and deputations this evening. Uh, we don't have any petitions, so we'll take you straight on to your item nine, which is advice from Adelaide Parklands Authority and reports from other committees. So 9.1 members, you've got a recommendation before you to note, which is the advice of APLA from a meeting held on the 22nd of February. I'm in your hands. Moved by Councillor Martin, seconded by Councillor Aviard. Any debate members? Just one question, Lord Mayor. May I ask the administration uh, to present this new authority charter to a meeting of council committee rather than going straight to council as is anticipated uh, in the report here? I'll take that as a question to the CEO, Councillor Martin. CEO? Yes, three, Lord Mayor. We can certainly um, schedule that in. Yep. Thank you. It may, uh, may result in a slight delay as was presented in the executive summary, but we'll work that through. Thank you. And there's any further debate, queries or questions? Summing up, Councillor Martin? Summing up. Okay, before you members, those in favour? Those against, we carry 9.1 to note. 
Members 9.2, you've got a recommendation to note and endorse, which is the uh, from the Audit Committee from a me meeting held on the 23rd of February 2018, moved by Councillor Martin, as printed. Correct. Seconded by the Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Martin, discussing the matter. DLM, members to you, Councillor Martin. Sorry. Members to the floor, those in favour? Those against, we carry 9.2. Thank you very much, members. Members, I'll take you to item 10, which is the Lord Mayor's verbal report. Uh, members, a busy start to the year, I'm pleased to share with you. Um, I hosted a small family gathering of the families behind Archer and Holland Jewellers, who are a very long-standing jewellery business in the City of Adelaide, in fact, 100 years. So we celebrated that in the Lady Esther Jacobs room. Also hosted a Lord Mayor reception to launch the John McDougall Stewart Sketching with Stewart book. Uh, and we also hosted a civic reception of the Adelaide Strikers BBL Championship teams last week. Hosted a Lord Mayor's Precinct Forum and welcomed competitors to the Australian Skateboarding League State Final at the Temporary Skate Park in Park 15. Attended the 2018 South Australian Investment and Trade Statement and also the AmCham Business Luncheon. Visited the Adelaide International School and New School in Rundle Mall, joined by Councillor Martin. Thank you, Councillor. AIS opened for enrolments for domestic students for the first time this year. Hosted the Lord Mayor's election breakfast for candidates contesting the state electorate of Adelaide. I think members, we have some 270 attendees. I'd like to thank the CEO and administration for organising a very, very good event. Took part in the SA Grow Up state election event hosted by, hosted by Horticultural Media SA Association of the Adelaide Showgrounds. That event, members, was to highlight the importance of horticultural initiatives across our state was also a panel member on the National Trust of South Australia valuing our Heritage Forum state election event to represent the City of Adelaide's <coughs> position on the importance of preserving and promoting our built and cultural heritage. And I thank Councillor Wilkinson for joining me at that event. I attended the 10th anniversary of the National Apology to the Stolen Generations Breakfast, hosted by Reconciliation SA, the 10th anniversary Apology Day commemorative event in Ville Gardens, hosted by United Communities, and hosted a Lord Mayor Morning Tea in recognition of the 10th anniversary of the National Apology Day. The Lady Maris and I attended numerous events to celebrate Lunar New Year celebrations, including Chinatown New Year Gala Dinner, Chinatown uh, Lunar New Year Street Party, uh, Chinese New Year Dinner hosted by the Premier, Bank SA Lunar New Year event, uh, Mosh Chinese Lunar New Year event, Australian Medical Chinese Association Lunar New Year event, China Business Net Network of South Australia Lunar New Year event, and the Oceanic Federation of Overseas Chinese Organisations from Vietnam, Cambodia and Laos Lunar New Year event. What a celebration. I proudly hosted the official opening of the Adelaide Qingdao Rose Garden in Ville Gardens with Mr Chai Si Ping, the Chinese Consul General in Adelaide and former Lord Mayor Alfred Huang. I'd like to thank uh, Councillor Priscilla Corbell Moore for putting forward the motion and uh, for the members that attend, attended the opening on the weekend, it was a wonderful event. And those members which have not yet seen the Adelaide Qingdao Rose Garden on South Terrace at Bill Gardens, please do. And it's magnificent. Again, CEO, to you and your team who laid out those gardens, thank you for doing a magnificent job. <coughs> I attended the opening nights of the Adelaide Fringe, Grounded Fringe and the Royal Croquet Club. I attended the and spoke at the Make Alex's Day event, not you, Councillor Antic, organised by Mix 102.3 breakfast host Jody and Soda in partnership with the Childhood Cancer Association, the MFS. And it was a very good event. It's held in Run Mall in partnership with the Run Management Authority. And uh, I must say, members, there were thousands of people there. And uh, I presented young little Alex a um, uh, City of Adelaide official crest. And uh, there were many people there, and he's a brave little boy. I attended the commissioning service of the Reverend Peter Balabansky at the St John's Church on Halifax Street and finally on behalf of Council signed the Adelaide Zero Homelessness Project Implementation Plan led by the Don Dunstan Foundation. Uh, recently the Lady Mayoress, I'm on the timer too, recently the Lady Mayoress member Jack Condis, President of the Royal South Australian Society of Arts, accepts the offer of the honorary position of Vice Patron. And the Lady Mayoress also presented to the RSL Australia Day medallions to recipients. And on the 22nd of February, the Lady Mayoress officially opened the North Adelaide Golf Club Women's 2018 Winter Season. 
Members, in conclusion, I would also like to very briefly share with you that uh, as a result of uh, our collective advocacy and the work we've done through the 2016 to 2020 strategic plan, and also with regards to the work we've done through this council chamber in terms of motions, there have been a number of election promises from all and sundry which irrespective of the outcome on the 17th of March 2018, I would say that the City of Adelaide is very well positioned. So Mooja Street in Chinatown, uh, commitments from both the opposition and from the current government, uh, skate park, commitment from the current government, uh, electric vehicles, so waiving of stamp duty and providing re free registration for five years for electric vehicles by the current government, tram extensions to uh, the uh, uh, East Link, Nord Parade, and tram extension to uh, O'Connell Street, otherwise known as Prospect Link. Uh, today's announcement by the opposition with regards to a national Aboriginal art and culture gallery on the ORA site is very consistent with our own aspirations. Study Adelaide funding by the opposition to increase funding and from the opposition to increase the bid fund for the Adelaide Convention Bureau. So, members, thank you, because collectively our advocacy work, I would suggest, has been extremely effective. Could I please have a member move the Lord Mayor's presiding member's report? Moved by Councillor Wilkinson, seconded by Councillor Martin. Those in favour of adopting? Those against? We carried. Thank you, members. I will take you now, members, please, to item 11, being 11.1, .1, reports from council members, page six. Do I have a mover, please, members? Moved by Councillor Martin. Can I have a second, to please, members? Moved by Councillor Moran. Any debate, members? Councillor Martin. Okay, just to provide an explanation, Lord Mayor, um, I recently attended this council's representative the meeting of the Adelaide Airports Consulting Committee, where, as you know, the City of Adelaide helipad proposal has been the subject of much discussion uh, and uh, negative feedback from uh, the regulatory authorities. Coincidentally, the authorities have now issued a revised set of guidelines for helicopter la landing sites and have asked uh, council and other interested parties to provide feedback on these draft guidelines. And secondly, I've included in their new plans, uh, yet with a construction date to be announced for an extension of Adelaide Airport, including new retail facilities, which I know this council opposes, uh, and which I've included for uh, the information of elected members. Uh, thank you, Councillor Martin. So we'll take the inclusion of those papers as a FYI. So thank you. Um, members, any further questions, queries about your own activities in, since our last council meeting? No, so that was moved by Councillor Martin, seconded by Councillor Martin. I put this before you to adopt that. Those in favour? Those against, we carry. So that carries members item 11.1. Which now takes us directly, members, to item 12.1, Main Street Historic Building Facade Improvement Scheme, which is page 31 of your papers. Councillor Wilkinson. Uh, I'd just like to declare a national or perceived conflict of interest because I'm a heritage consultant and there's a possibility that, that, that um, I, I may be involved in the scheme at some future point in time. Okay, thank you for the declaration, Councillor. You are electing to do what? Uh, I'll be staying in the room. You'll be staying in the room. Okay, so you're declaring and staying. Members, you have a recommendation before you with regards to item 12.1, which is to note and endorse. So moving as printed, Councillor Martin. Correct. I'll need a seconder. Deputy Lord Mayor, thank you. Councillor Martin, you wish to speak to the matter? No, I don't. DLM, members, I look to you. Summing up, Councillor Martin? Summed up, Lord Mayor. Members, I put it before you, those in favour? Let me just take advice, excuse me. Okay, now, um, Councillor Wilkinson, you said actual or perceived. You'll need to make up your mind whether it is, whether it is actual or perceived, so to speak. You need to nominate which one, because if it's actual, you can't vote. If it's perceived, you can. Okay, so you won't be voting. So members, I apologise, I'm going to put this back for you. Those in favour? Those against? The item is carried. Thank you, Judy. 
Uh, members, I will now take you to item 12.2. You've got a recommendation to note and approve. This is the Sustainability Incentive Scheme update, page 43. I look to you, members. DLM, you're moving, you're moving as printed. Councillor Moran, you're seconding. DLM, do you wish to speak to the matter? Um, thank you, Lord Mayor. Only to say that it's fantastic to see that the uptake has been so good and um, uh, it's great to see that the sustain Sustainability Incentive Scheme is working. So. Councillor Moran? Uh, no. Members, I look to you. DLM? No further debate summed up. So, members, I put this before you. Those in favour? Those against? Members, we carry item 12.2, which takes us directly onto item 12.3, Victoria Park Vegetation Management Plan, page 54, to adopt a note, moved by Councillor Martin as printed. I look for a seconder. Councillor Hender, thank you. Councillor Martin, do you wish to speak to the matter? No, no. Councillor Hender, members, I look to you for debate. Councillor Martin, summing up. Summing up. Members, I put it before you for the vote. Those in favour? Those against? We carry that item, which is item 12.3. Members, I take you directly to item 12.4, welcoming cities, page 68 in your papers, to approve and authorise, moved by the DLM, seconded by Councillor Corbell Moore. DLM, do you wish to speak to the matter? Uh, just briefly, Lord Mayor, I'd like to thank Mr Alley for coming in tonight and speaking to us. Um, look, I think this uh, works really well, uh, very much um, building on the work that's already been done in this space uh, by this council, and also um, appreciate the efficiency of um, there being an existing framework and the ability to share the learnings and opportunities through that framework, um, particularly the international knowledge where we can access the best policies and practices uh, in social co cohesion strategies used around the world. Um, I think we can always learn, and this actually sounds like it would be a, a fabulous way that we can um, join a network and um, exchange our knowledge and learn from other cities around the world. Thank you. Thank you, DLM. Councillor Corbell Moore. Uh, just I think it's a wonderful initiative and it makes a lot of sense for the City of Adelaide to be a part of it um, and to um, join a bunch of cities globally which are at the fore of becoming um, welcoming cities and um, it, it really fits with our strategic alignment in being a livable city, a creative city and we are known for being very friendly, our local population. So I think it makes a lot of sense. I'm very happy to support it. Members, I'll to you debate. Councillor Slama. Just a quick comment uh, uh, as well, Lord Mayor. Um, seeing as uh, the report here talks uh, three, three formal processes, commit to welcome, communicate welcome, plan to welcome, I think it's a great opportunity to, uh, uh, for our administration to work our brand into what we do with uh, sister cities and uh, cities internationally. So it's a good opportunity to, to work closely with the brand of Adelaide and uh, I hope to administration that they can um, bring that to front of mind as well. Thank you, Councillor. Members, any further debate? DLM, back to you to sum up. Summed up, okay. Members, I put this before you. Those in favour? Those against? We carry. Thank you very much, Members. So that is item 12.4. Thank you very much indeed. So, Members, I take you directly to... Now, Members, you've got items 12.4. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. Members, I'm going to manage this through a call over, please. So I'm going to start with 12.5. Any matters which you do want to specifically call out and debate, please say so, say so as I go through them. We will deal with those matters that you don't in an on block nature. So I'll start with 12.5. Councillor Martin. I'll go to 12.6, DLM. I will take you to 12.7. I will take you to 12.8, Councillor Martin. I'll take you to 12.9. I'll take you to 12.10, Councillor Martin. And I'll take you to 12.11. Okay, so members, if we could please deal with Items 12.11, 12.9, 12.7.
Would that be correct, Judy? So we've got three items. Can I have a mover, please, members, to deal with those three items? We've almost lost Alex. <laughs> Hazards of the Council Chamber, Alex. Can I have a mover, please, to deal with those three items, please, members? Moved by Councillor Corbell Moore, seconded by the Deputy Lord Mayor. No debate. I'm going to put those directly before you. Those in favour? Those against? We carry those three items. So, members, we now individually will deal with item 12.5. I look to you. Councillor Martin. Yes, thank you, Lord Mayor, and uh, thank you to the administration for um, a detailed report uh, and uh, for the openness, and I'm pleased to see some of the car park operations in there. Um, my uh, purpose in asking for this to be pulled is to ask a question, and that is, at page 89, T127, I understand that the proposed um, landscape improvements on Bundy's Road, which was uh, scheduled for this year, has now been withdrawn completely and the funding diverted elsewhere. May I ask that that project remain on the priority list for 2018-19, uh, even though it's been withdrawn from 17-18? I'll take that as a question, Councillor Martin, and refer that to our CEO. CEO? Through Lord Mayor, we can, we can certainly take that on board, and uh, if there are any issues with that, we'll report back to Council. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Members, any further matter with regards to item 12.5? Any further debate? Councillor Antic? Does the Lord Mayor make the observation that that presumably is a question which could have been asked offline? Yeah. Uh, and uh, well, I just make the observation that the more time we spend on those questions here, the more staff time, etc. So just to make that observation. Lord Mayor, seeing as that was directed at me, may I say that I attended the briefing this afternoon. I did ask the question offline and the staff were unable to answer that and therefore I raised it in Council tonight. But I thank Councillor Ranty for his interest. Duly noted, Councillors. So, Members, 12.5. Now, Councillor Martin was the mover of 12.5. That's correct? Yes. So, Members, do I have any further debate on 12.5? Councillor Moran, I just need a second. I'm going to take, because we've had two questions and no debate. So, can, are you seconding Councillor Artem's 12.5, Councillor Moran? Good afternoon. Councillor Ander. Okay, I've got a seconder. I'm going to go to Councillor Moran for a question. Yeah, yes, this doesn't mean that the Bundy's Road, um, uh, the, this isn't an instruction, is it? it's just a question, is it? Uh, you can ask, you can ask it's a question or you can debate. No, no, I want to know what um, Councillor Martin's question means. Does he just want to know why it's been dropped? There's no instruction to do it. Does I'll refer that back to our CEO, Councillor Moran. CEO? Three Lord Mayor, I, as I understand it, um, Councillor Martin wants to ensure that it's not dropped off the list entirely and that it will come back next year for consideration. That's as I understood it. That sounds, to me, that sounds like an instruction. Um, a question would be, is this not being dropped off? Because there, are, I don't want any more, I personally agree with dropping it off. So I don't think these unilateral questions should be taken well, Councillor, I, took it, I did take it as a question, uh, as you would all see, and I referred it to the CEO. The CEO gave an answer, so thank you for your comment. Greatly appreciate it. Members, do I have any further debate with regards to item 12.5, which we have a motion to note and approve, which has been moved by Councillor Martin, seconded by Councillor Moran. I don't see any further hands. I'm going back to Councillor Martin to sum up. So, members, I put this before you. Those in favour? Those against? And we carry item 12.5. Members, I'll take you to item 12.6, which is 2018 LGA Ordinary General Meeting. And bear with me, members. Okay, Deputy Lord Mayor. Um, thank you, Lord Mayor. I'd like to move this printed. However, I would ask whether you could take it in parts. Uh, yes, I can, uh, Deputy Lord Mayor. And what I would suggest before we look for a second, and just to assist you, councillors, is that we would uh, move the uh, motion. So I, I would need a procedural motion. 
uh, I would then deal with voting 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, 2.4 and 2.5 separately. And then at the end, I would then look to you because I need a voting delegate and I need a proxy voting delegate. So if that helps you, councillors. So could I look for a seconder, please, members? Councillor Hender, thank you very much. So do I have any further debate about this, members? Because I will move a procedural motion to get us going. You can debate each of them separately, should you wish. So I'm going to vote on the procedural motion. So I put the procedural motion before you, members. Those in favour? Those against? So we carry. So I'm now going to take you to item uh, 2.1. Deputy Lord Mayor, which is effectively, um, we'll take these in five parts. Um, thank you, Lord Mayor. I'm happy with uh, 2.1, 2.2, 2.4, 2.5. Um, but I'd like to talk to the Chamber about 2.3. So can we take those through? Okay, so what I might do, just in absence of any further debate, members, do I have any further debate on 2.1? I don't. I'm going to put this before you to vote on it, and I'll just do these one, two, three, four, five. So, those in favour of 2.1, Councillor Martin, are you looking at me for a question, or are you voting? Yes, I am. I'm, okay. I'm confused. Okay. I, I thought 2.1 was the appointment of the delegate. That's not the case. No. No, no it's not. Okay. No, it's not. That's, that is that's right. part one, and I'll do that at the end once we've dealt with 2.1, 2.2, 3, 4, and 5. Thank you. Okay. So, members, I'll now put back before you 2.1. Those in favour? Those against, we've carried 2.1. I'm going to look to you for 2.2. Do I have any debate about 2.2? I don't, so I'm going to put it to the vote. Those in favour of 2.2? Those against, <coughs> we're carrying 2.2. I'm now going to look to you for 2.3, DLM. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, look, my concern is really that um, if we have the same uh, outdoor dining permits as all our other South Australian councils, um, being a capital city, we may need different requirements um, than other councils. And I do think that we should be looking at our outdoor dining permits um, for, for what we're trying to achieve slightly differently. Um, uh, for example, there might be councils where they want different alignment or they actually might want um, those wind breaks or any other things that they could say and then that becomes a, a permit condition that we have to also put in place here, whereas we know that we don't want those things. Um, so it really depends. Um, I think obviously administration can work through so that there is a level or a high level of consistency, but I do think that our permit needs to be in order with what we need here. Thank you, DLM. So I'll take that you're speaking against 2.3. Members, do I have any further debate on 2.3? I don't, so I'm going to put 2.3 before you for the vote. Those in favour of 2.3? Those against 2.3? So 2.3 fails. Members, I look to you for 2.4. Do I have any debate, members? I'll put 2.4 straight for the vote. Those in favour? Those against? 2.4 is carried. I'll put 2.5 before you. Those in favour? Those against? 2.5 will carry. Now, members, I now need a nomination for a voting delegate. Yes. Don't look at me like that, Councillor Moran. Members, we need a voting delegate. Councillor Hender, you're nominating who? Um, well, Lord Mayor, I'm going to nominate you because you're our local voting delegate last time, weren't you? Uh, I have been in the past, and so is Councillor Clearahan. Okay. Uh, I will accept if nominated, yes. You, are you you're attending the meeting in any event? Yes, I will be. Then I nominate you. Be there. Okay, do we have any further nominations, members? Okay, could I have a motion to do that, please, members? Moved by Councillor Martin, seconded by Councillor Slama. All those in favour? Those against? Carried. And members, I think I probably need a proxy voting delegate. Do I have a uh, nomination for a proxy? Move. Who are you nominating? Can Councillor I Martin? nominate Councillor Clarahan if she's not here? Only in the absence of no other nominations, because Councillor Clarahan, as you may know, members, has sent an email saying that uh, in absentia, uh, should no, uh, there be no other nominations, she would accept, so I can do that. 
So no other nominations, so we'll say that Councillor Clarehan will accept the proxy. So I'll put that before you. Those in favour, those against, we will carry. And that means, members, we have now dealt with that item in its entirety. So thank you very much, members. Members, this now takes us to item 12.8 which is for approving and noting, noting and its delegations under the Local Government Food Vendors Amendment Act 2017, page 18. Moved by Councillor Martin. Seconded by Councillor Hender. Councillor Martin, do you wish to speak to it? I wish to ask a question, if I may, Lord Mayor. Certainly, Councillor. Uh, prior to the uh, controversy here in the City of Adelaide over mobile, mobile food vans, the City issued licences and received the income from those licences. I understand from this paper that the City will continue to administrate the scheme, but my question is, will we receive any of the income charged for the licence fees? Thank you, Councillor. I will refer that to the CEO as a question. CEO? Clear off of thanks. Through the presiding member, um, yes, we will we'll continue to receive the income, and as per previous council resolution, part of that income is repurposed um, towards the Enterprise Adelaide work. Thank you. Councillor Landy, you seconded that motion. Do you wish to speak to it? Members, I look to you for any debate. Councillor Martin, summing up. Senator. Members, I put this before you for the vote. Those in favour? Those against? We carry. So thank you, members. That deals with item 12.8, which leaves us with the final matter with regards to that block of matters, which is 12.10, Prudential Management Policy, page 26, to adopt. Do I have a mover? Councillor Martin, seconded by Councillor Moran. Councillor Martin, do you wish to speak to it? I wish to ask. Uh, just a, a quick clarification. Uh, at the top of page 131, uh, talking of confidentiality, could the administration explain what the words commercial value mean? Is that commercially sensitive information or the value of the property? Refer that matter to the CEO, please. Could you give a page reference, please, Councillor Martin, to yes. assist? Page 31, first line. Page 31, first line. 131. 131, I'll say. Um, through you, Lord Mayor, um, the interpretation in relation to the commercial value in that context would be any commercial interest or any value that council may derive in a commercial nature from the report the transaction in place. Okay, Councillor Brown, you seconded. Do you wish to speak to this matter? Members, I look to you. Summing up, Councillor Martin. Members, I put this matter before you, which is 12.10. Those in favour? Those against? We carry 12.10. We've dealt with 12.11. So members, no emerging key risks, so I'm going to take you straight to item 13, which is question on notice by Councillor Martin. Councillor Martin, would you like for me to take that question on notice as read? Now, Councillor Martin, there are various tables on this, so in terms of the presiding member's response to your question on notice, are you happy for the members to take it as read and just ensure that members of the gallery, should they require a uh, require a copy of it, they can request? Thank you, Lord You happy with that? Okay, so thank you, members. Should any members of the gallery want a copy of this, please uh, put your hand up and uh, the team will look after you. Members, I will move you along. <coughs> Two, item 14 in your agenda, which is questions without notice. Councillor Martin. Yes, Lord Mayor, in relation to the question on notice, it was a request for updated st statistics with regard to uh, parkland uses, and the information that's been supplied under the heading of updated statistics was compiled six years ago with a promise of something to be delivered in 2018. Are there no statistics available, or are we compiling them every six years? And, and uh, can the administration provide some indication of the resumption of land by the state government for uh, areas along North Terrace and indeed uh, the Riverbank, which was the intention of the question? Thank you, 
Councillor Martin, CEO. Yes, thanks. That's through you, Lord Mayor. Um, Councillor Martin, the, the state of the Parklands report, which will be with you in May, will cover those items. I can't comment whether it only happens every six years. I can certainly find out, though, but it will be coming to Council in May. Thank you. Members, any further questions without notice? There are none, so I will move you right along to motions on notice, which is item 15 on your agenda, the first of which is our Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Ver Shaw, motion on notice regarding publication displaying City of Adelaide Artworks, page 136, DLM. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I'd, like to, uh, I'd like to ask for a second for the motion. Councillor Corbell Moore is your seconder. Thank you, Councillor Corbell Moore. Um, when I was in, um, in uh, Edinburgh, uh, I was gifted by the Lord Provost a, uh, a book that uh, celebrated 100 of the artworks from the City of Edinburgh, which is a beautiful publication. Um, uh, so it was gifted to the city. It looks at all the archives. It was put together by their archive team and working with the, um, the art gallery and the museum and, and public spaces. Um, so we had a bit of a, a chat with the archive team here. Um, there are public photos in Parliament House um, that all talk to what the, the development of the city, um, as well as you know looking at our public art um, and and how we position the city. I just think that that would be a, a beautiful publication that we could work with partners uh, to look at some of the work that we've got in archives, look at some of the work that's in other institutions around the city, and um, and also sort of basically celebrate the public art that's in our, our city as well. Um, in terms of uh, costs and things, we would work it to be collaborative. Um, also, knowing a few publishers, they're quite happy to take uh, think projects like that on. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Corbell Moore, you seconded. Do you wish to speak to this matter? Oh, just briefly, Lord Mayor. I think um, the Deputy Lord Mayor for raising this. I think in um, particular the idea of collaboration with other entities, um, for example, state government or other cultural institutions in the community and the way that Adelaide City Council could work together with them to display what we have in our archives. Um, I think that's very important and it does actually I would say build on a motion that I moved back in 2016 at the Economic and Community Development Committee, which was to display items stored in our archives in appropriate spaces, which included a town hall. And we've seen some of that archival material now displayed in town hall, but it was also in community centres, libraries and the public realm. Um, so I, I think this is a great idea and I think we should be doing more of it. Um, so I think we should all support it. Public artwork is a very good thing for our city. It beautifies our city, and um, yeah, there's lots of opportunities for further improvements in that. Well said, Councillor. Members, I look to you. I don't see any hands, so I'm going back to our Deputy Lord Mayor. Summed up. Summed up. Those in favour? Those against? We carry item 15.1, motions on notice, which takes us directly to item 15.2, Councillor Slama, motion on notice, Economic Development Tourism Program. Page 137 of your papers, Councillor Slama. Uh, move the motion is printed, Lord Mayor, and seek a second. Uh, Councillor Abia. Thank you, Councillor. Floor is yours, Councillor Slama. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Members, in 2014, I ran in this council election with a commitment to small business, a commitment to business in general. And upon looking at our economic uh, development dashboard, the insides, if you've looked at that or haven't looked at that, do have a look at it. It's an awesome tool that our economic development department and the Matt Grounds team has put together. The numbers up there talk to approximately 5,100 businesses in our city, employing more than 115,000 employees just in the city, which is almost five times the amount of residents in the city. Um, I was very interested to note the gross regional product at almost $18 million in our capital city as well. So it's a good number there. So I remain committed to small business as three years into this council and I certainly want to remain in, uh, committed to small business moving forward. And that's why I put this motion to you because we have a new restructured economic development team. And whereas it's important for planning, very important for strategic planning, I'm a believer that execution is even more important. Um, so this motion seeks to get a report back in about 30 days and it talks to 
having a look at some of the goals, the, uh, the targets and the measurements of the Economic Development Department. Because it is, it is important that we measure what, what, that, we, that we measure what we manage. Um, now, the Economic Development Department isn't the only department that closely aligns to small businesses. I understand that there are other departments that, that work with businesses in their city as well, but it's definitely one of the key, key drivers and, and most aligned, in my opinion, very important. And so this motion talks to um, the report and the, the Economic Development Department aligns itself with sectors that show um, the highest growth. I want to see that in the report. I want to see how we, for the Economic Development Department, can help new businesses establish in the city, but also sustain those who are already established in our city. And so that, uh, that's about it, members. I recommend this motion to you. I seek your support uh, on that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Slamo. Councillor Abiyad, you seconded. Do you wish to speak to the matter? Members, I'm looking across the floor. Do I have any queries, comments or debate? Councillor Slamo, back to you to sum up. Members, I put this matter before you. Those in favour? Those against? We carry item 15.2, which takes us directly onto item 15.3. Councillor Martin, motion on notice. Transition to carbon neutrality, page 138. Yes, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, you seek a seconder? Yes, I do. Councillor Wilkinson, the floor is yours, Councillor Martin. Look, Lord Mayor, uh, when you went to Paris uh, three years ago, uh, or thereabouts anyway, um, uh, and came back with um, uh, the wish that we should become the world's first carbon neutral city, there was uh, much enthusiasm. Um, and indeed, uh, we are now on the path to becoming, um, as a council entity, um, carbon neutral by 2020, which is in 21 months, and the city carbon neutral in 2025. Um, uh, we and the state government, you might remember at that time, commissioned a consultant, Pitt and Sherry, to come up with a system measuring our progress, but there has been no report to council in the last three years about what that progress is, or indeed what goals that we have in place that will help us deliver that goal of being a carbon neutral city in 21 months. And so uh, this motion is aimed at uh, asking the administration to uh, provide the detail. Now, Lord Mayor, I have, uh, and members have also been given copies of the administration's comments, which indicate that that is possible and that uh, the information will be presented to us on the 27th of March. Um, uh, so in uh, that case, I, I would ask as a matter of process, if uh, councillors would support this, uh, and also uh, the understanding that the administration has given in the feedback that there will be a series of workshops where these targets for uh, 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 carbon emission reduction will be uh, discussed with members. Um, thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you, members, and I trust that you've all read your administration report, which was uh, put before you today. Uh, your seconder, Councillor Martin, was Councillor Wilkinson. Do you wish to speak to this matter, Councillor Wilkinson? Members, I look to you. Do we have any debate? Councillor Martin, I'm looking back to you. Summed up, Lord Mayor. Members, I'm looking to all of you. Those in favour? Those against? Division. Motion is carried. Those members voting in favour of the motion, please rise. Councillor Wilkinson, Councillor Hender, Councillor Slammer, Councillor Corbell Moore, Councillor Martin, and the Deputy Lord Mayor. Lord Thank you. Members, the motion is carried in favour. Members, I will now look to item 16 on your agenda, which is uh, motions without notice. Deputy Lord Mayor. I have a motion without notice. Um, I look for a second. Yes. Now, members, can you, could you please read that to the uh, council chamber, please, Deputy Lord Mayor? Certainly. Um, I seek a second, second uh, to facilitate consideration by the Council that Council invites Ghana Elders to attend committee to share understandings in relation to the cultural significance of Pinky Flat and surrounded areas. That Council work with Ghana to identify opportunities for interpretation of the Terence Plowright sculpture. 
that Council work with Ghana to develop a process for consistently incorporating Ghana knowledge and cultural heritage into the design, use and management city spaces that allows Ghana to meet their custodial responsibilities and that Council requests that Ghana identify any barriers that they may anticipate in the development and implementation of such a process. Dion, can I ask you first, before I accept this motion, why this matter wasn't put on notice? Yes, I apologise to my fellow members. It is time sensitive. Um, uh, it needs to be debated before the Reconciliation Committee meets tomorrow, at which point uh, they will be considering the draft um, stretch uh, reconciliation action plan, um, which needs to be finalised before it comes into Council on the 13th of March. On that basis, I will accept it. Thank you, DLM. You've got a seconder with Councillor Corbell Moore. You wish to speak to this, DLM? Thank you. Um, look, I am aware that Ghana were engaged by um, uh, by the team when they were looking at the position of the Terence Plower route sculpture, and that they gave feedback and their preference for the site. And part of part of that was because I was very curious as to why that particular site was chosen. Um, they were also able to give consideration to the cultural heritage of. Uh, Pinky Flat and surrounding areas, and they agreed that the water location was best. Um, what that drew to my attention was the amount of activity that's been happening in Pinky Flat, and I'm hoping that um, uh, that this motion and the consideration by the Reconciliation Committee may ensure that there's the same uh, mm -hmm. uh, ability for, to facilitate that engagement um, and consideration by, about all activities that are happening on the sites, uh, in particular that one. Um, in November, um, we heard from Auntie Yvonne Agus, um, and we know that while they were doing the engagement around building the new um, stretch reconciliation action plan, that members of the Ghana community actually spoke about having the opportunity to speak directly with council. Um, so I'm not talking about a forum, where it's actually a conversation that they've requested. And in particular, they want to talk to council to be able to um, be part of planning processes that um, enable Ghana knowledge and um, their uh, cultural and spiritual obligations to be respected and shared as part of our processes. Um, there's so many capital works in progress around the city and we've got so many more on the slate that we know are coming up that I think it's absolutely critical that we have clarity around the process uh, and particularly um, Council's position around Ghana acknowledgement um, in our strategy design and project um, implementation and also um, how we look at maintenance across the city and North Adelaide of course. Um, I do applaud the work of the uh, Reconciliation Committee. We do great work here, and um, and I know we're a front runner and a leadership in this uh, leaders in this space. Um, but I'm also sure that there are many other areas that we should be listening and engaging. And I think that if we can actually have the opportunity to have that discussion in committee before the reconciliation plan is finalised, that would be great for everyone. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Corbell Moore, you seconded. Do you wish to speak to this matter? Oh, just briefly, Lord Mayor. I think um, point one is a really good idea, having the uh, Ghana elders come in and speak to committee and keep us informed about uh, cultural aspects associated with Pinky Flat. Um, points two, three, and four, I actually thought were taking place anyway um, by default, um, and that Ghana and local Aboriginal people um, had been involved in the process of deciding that location, and I know that they were. I just think that this motion seeks to um, strengthen and enhance that um, con communication process and dialogue that's already taking place. Thank you, Councillor. Members, any queries, questions or debate? DLM, I'm going back to you. Done. Members, I put this before you. Those in favour? Those against? We carry. Members, do I have any further motions without notice? Yeah. Councillor Antic? I do, I do actually just... Uh, <coughs> I want to, actually, can, I, can I ask a question before I flag that to the CEO? To, yeah, yes, you can. Okay, uh, well, my question uh, is, has the CEO uh, at this stage made a decision that commenced any investigation in relation to the breach of the confidential information to in daily uh, on the, their article regarding the Cornu site on the 13th of February? See, so before you answer that question, Councillor Antic, I will allow it, but I would encourage you next time that in section 14, which is questions without notice, that would have been the appropriate place to do it. So. 
CEO. Three Lord Mayor. Look, at, at, not at this stage. I've had some preliminary, preliminary um, considerations and I'm still seeking advice. So um, I had intended to update members in due course once I've got to that stage. Well, I'm, I'm like, thank you, CEO. I'm wondering if I can move something uh, without notice or bear it, and I'll just read it out and perhaps they can see whether or not you accept that the council instructs the CEO to investigate uh, a breach of confidence relating to the publication of an article in the in daily on 13. September 2018, a report back to Council with any recommendations regarding the uh, punitive steps to be taken. Uh, let me just ensure that gets recorded before I make a decision on that, Councillor. So, could you please say that again for the benefit of the Secretariat? I'll try and read it out as I did. Uh, the Council instructs the CEO to investigate the breach of confidence relating to the publication of an article in the daily. Just oh, slow down, Councillor. Okay, now before I, uh, Councillor, why was this matter not put on notice? Uh, Lord Mayor, it did not make the, the category the required time, so uh, I can't put it any higher than that. Uh, if you're, uh, Lord Mayor, if you're not inclined to take it uh, without notice, I can push out and I'll put it uh, on notice on the next occasion if that's more suitable. Uh, Councillor, that would be more suitable. Thank you, Lord uh, not wanting to detract from your motion, but from the timing of it, I would suggest that you put that on motion for two weeks, uh, on, notice, on notice for two weeks' time, please. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Antic. Members, do I have any further motions without notice? I don't, so I'm going to take you to item 17 on your agenda, which is we have four matters, members, to discuss in confidence, which will require four separate motions to move into confidence, the first of which is an item to note, which is item 18.1.1, Audit Committee Report. Can I have a mover, please, members, to move that matter into confidence, Councillor Slama? Seconded by the Deputy Lord Mayor. No debate. Those in favour? Those against? We carry 18.1.1 into confidence, which takes us to 18.2.1. Can I have a mover, please, members, to move that matter into confidence? Moved by Councillor Slama, seconded by Councillor Hender. Any debate? I'm going to put that before you. Those in favour? Those against? We move item 18.2.1 into confidence, which takes me to 18.2.2. Moved by the Deputy Lord Mayor, seconded by Councillor Slama. Any debate? I put that before you. Those in favour? Councillor Martin, you voting? Yes. yes sir. Carried. Thank you. Lastly, members, item 18.3.1, which is a motion on notice. I need that. I need a motion to move that matter into confidence. Councillor Slama, seconded by Councillor Martin. No debate. Those in favour? Those against, we carry. So, if I can look to the gallery, and can I please acknowledge Mayor David Parkin very belatedly from the City of Burnside. I apologise, sir. Uh, welcome to the City of Adelaide Council Chamber. On that note, I need to ask you to leave. I'm told that Burnside and Adelaide City run the most formal meetings, and I think we probably do. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor Parkin. Thank you for visiting the City of Adelaide Council Chamber. Greatly appreciated. I'm sorry for asking you to leave. <laughs> now, members, uh, any persons not associated with those four matters, can I also ask you to leave the Council Chamber? I don't have anyone else on that note. Can you please close the Council Chamber in?
Members, thank you. We are back in public and the time is 7.34 p.m. on Tuesday the 27th of February. I thank you for your contribution to the meeting, members. Thank you to the CEO and the team. I formally declare the meeting closed. Thank you.